new videos every day. Theoretical things that don't exist in this theory of abiogenesis. Now, one of these things is the self-replicating molecule. Um, in order to come up with a theory of chemical evolution, you have to have some molecule that can self-replicate itself. And in fact, it has to imperfectly self-replicate itself so that you can have some molecules better than other molecules so that you can have some type of evolution. Now, there is such a thing in nature as self-replicating molecules. Certain crystals, as an example, will replicate. Now, here's the deal, though. None of the molecules that your body is made out of are self-replicating. DNA is not a self-replicating molecule. If you take DNA out of a cell, you stick it on the counter, it's not going to replicate itself. It requires certain enzymes and molecular machines and proteins that the, in the cell to replicate. RNA is not a self-replicating molecule. The 20 amino acids that all our, our proteins are made out of are not self-replicating. Proteins are not self-replicating. So if any of these things actually self-replicated, we, we really wouldn't need a DNA system. Now, so this self-replicating molecule that life evolved from is a theoretical. It doesn't exist. There was this MIT guy recently who came up with this self-replicating molecule and, you know, uh, science, you know, the media is buzzing about its evidence for abiogenesis. Well, the thing about it is, is it's not one of the molecules of your body or any living thing on this planet is made out of. So it's not the right molecule. So in order for science to explain this, though, they've gone, well, we know that the molecules the body is made out of don't self-replicate, but maybe there was this molecule that existed before the molecules that our body are made out of, and uh, once it evolved for a while, our amino acids replaced it later. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is the protocell. Um, in order to get from the protein step to the cell step, uh, and there can't be this huge jump of, you know, millions of things being organized correctly all at once. So there had to be something in between for a naturalist explanation. Um, and what they've come up with is a protocell. Now, a protocell is something that's like a cell, but it's not a cell. It's similar, it has similar qualities to a living cell, but it's not living, right? So it's it's an in-between sort of thing, right? Now, the thing about a protocell is they don't exist. Nobody's ever seen one. There's no evidence in nature for a protocell. There's no fossils of protocells. They're hypothetical constructs. Now, if you actually search for a protocell, you will find paper after paper of different models for a protocell. And each one of these is a different theoretical model for how a protocell might have been or what a protocell could be. Uh, so they're all just ideas. Now, in addition to it being a theoretical thing that doesn't exist, None of them have working models. You know, there's none of these models are good enough that we can take it into a laboratory and try to make a protocell artificially, right? So, doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, so to kind of look at this from a theological perspective for a second, right? Um, you have these things that are different creation myths. You know, I've studied at least two dozen different religions, and probably my favorite thing to read is different creation myths. And there are ideas about how life began. You know, people, you know, looked around and they went, you know, why am I here? And how did that tiger get here? And how did that lion get here? And how did it all start? And so they came up with these ideas, or you could even say models for how life began. Now, some creation stories are, you know, you have one God who's a demiurge, which is a Greek word, which means creator. So you have one creator, and he creates everything. Some of them have, there's a struggle between these gods, and in the process of the struggle, the world is created. Um, and some of them, a god will die, and he'll fall, and his fallen body becomes the earth, right? 
so you have all these ideas on how life began. Now, the main difference between the creation myth and the scientific explanation of abiogenesis is agency, is cause. Um, in creation stories, there's something that created the earth. There's a cause or there's something that created life. In science, they say, well, we're trying to come up with a natural explanation of how this could have happened without agency or without cause. So the main difference between these creation stories and various religions and the scientific idea of abiogenesis is this idea of cause or agency. You know, the uh, religious side said something made it happen. The uh, atheistic side or the science side or the materialist side said it just happened. You know, it just was organized perfectly by accident kind of thing, right? Now, like I said, I'm agnostic on the point, but let's say just hypothetically for a second that there was some type of agency, there was a god, or, you know, uh, you actually have these uh, a religion called the Raelians that believe that uh, life was implanted on Earth and engineered by alien beings who came down and developed the DNA code, right? Um, if there was agency, though, be it supernatural or alien or whatever, then trying to come up with a naturalistic explanation or an explanation of how it could have happened without some type of intervention or agency probably isn't going to work. But like I said, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not sure how life came about, really. But, you know, a lot of people would fault different religious theories or ideas about how life started by saying that, you know, well, they're making things up. You know, they're uh, saying something existed that didn't, and therefore it's a myth, right? But what's the difference between, you know, these different religious views on how life could have started and what's science is doing by making up things like these self-replicating molecules or these protocells that, you know, there's really no actual visible objective evidence for. Um, so you could argue that both sides are just made up. <laughs> and kind of my point being, right, you know, I've read dozens and dozens and dozens of different creation myths and you know, once you've read about a dozen of them, you pretty much recognize one when you see it. And, you know, our modern concept of abiogenesis is really just a creation myth. Um, you know, it's a naturalistic explanation of how we think life might have happened without any agency. And that's all it is. Now, to kind of bring that home point a little more, about 3,000, 4,000 years ago, the Egyptian creation myth, they believed in this goddess called Nu. And uh, Nu was a primordial goddess. She wasn't actually personalized. Uh, nobody worshipped her. There's no temples to her. So she's more like a force. And, and kind of more specifically, she's a primordial force that brought life into being. And she's a primordial sea. So they believe that in the beginning there was a sea of new, a primordial soup, and from the sea of new sprang life. Well, that's an idea that's 4,000 years old, and it's pretty much what abiogenesis and science says today. <laughs> so if you hear people talking about abiogenesis, realize that they're talking about theoretical models. Um, and really what it is, is it's just the materialist version of Genesis.